I'm a potato girl kind of guy. Previous seasons, not as much. This season, all the way. So Attack on Titan, final season, episode seven just came out. It was pretty incredible, especially if you're one of those fans that doesn't like Attack on Titan for its talky talk. This had a lot of action in it and a lot of setup for the next couple episodes. I am absolutely ready for Attack on Titan final season. The next episode, there's gotta be some crazy stuff that's going down. But with all of that out of the way, this is my first impressions, my first reaction, breakdown, a little bit of analysis as well, a little bit of a recap even. Attack on Titan final season episode seven. Now, if you are here for the analytical review based stuff or my theories, then please go check out my video that will be coming out on Wednesday on this episode, which I guarantee you really do not want to miss. So with that out of the way, be sure to subscribe to never miss that video and let's get right into it. So continuation from last scene, Porco is essentially saved by Peek is, which I, you know, I'm just going to say right now, I called that last episode. So uh, I'm going to hang my hat high on that one. <laughs> but Peek's guns are actually perfect for infantry, which I really, really like that they pointed that out. I thought that was a really cool aspect. And then we have Willie's sister. She starts to use her ability. So she is in her crystallized form. So what she does is basically a hardening ability that we've seen Aaron use plenty of times before. She uses her hardening ability to stop Aaron and trap him. Then we see, oh lord, the beast titan arrive. What a beast. It's actually revealed that Magath was alive because last episode we obviously saw the grenade go off so we didn't know if Magath was alive. Gabby, we see her as well. She's running towards the battlefield, of course, and she says that she is going to kill Aaron, which I said last episode that Aaron Yeager was creating a monster in Gabby. I think there's no turning back for Gabby at this point. I don't, I don't think she's going back to the wholesome girl that we knew before, I think Gabby is a lost cause at this point. So we see Reiner and Falco for the first time since a couple episodes ago, and Reiner saved Falco. There was a really cool establishing shot of Zeke swatting away soldiers and Peek shooting at them while Falco looks on in the distance, and he goes back into this really cool like in hand encasing thing that, that encases Reiner, and he's looking at Reiner and he looks awful. He looks partly like his Titan form, like he's almost in his Titan form, but he's not quite, and it's leaving these marks on his face that show, you know, what his Titan form looks like, but on his actual human person, which looks really, really evil and sinister in my opinion. We see Mikasa shoot the Thunder Spears at the Warhammer Titan's crystallized form, I guess, and it doesn't work at all. So they're going to need something a little bit more powerful, which <laughs> Aaron has some ideas later on. We'll get into it's revealed then that Reiner is basically in this comatose state. At this point, he says he wants to die, so Falco works out that, well, it's up to Reiner at this point if he wants to live or just die at this moment. Which, I wonder if that is another ability that Titans have to where they can just choose to die at the end of their lifespan. It's super interesting, but you can only guess at this point. Peek tells Porco that there is no reason to rush in since they're all using ODM gear and that Marley forces have surrounded the zone. She's basically telling him to be cautious, which I think is good. But as we see later on, it seems Porco's brashness really gets the best of him. Then we see a really cool scene where the Beast Titan unleashes his crushed rock attack. I always find that attack so cool because the way it was introduced in the previous season obviously was extremely devastating. But I think it's just a really cool visual of this super huge Titan. Titan, you know, taking these rocks, crushing them and using them as basically like kind of like a gigantic shotgun blast, but it's much longer range. It's really, really cool visual. Zeke then says yeah, he doesn't want Aaron Jaeger, even though they're both Jaegers. He wants Levi. Both Gabby and Falco arrive with Magath. Magath is like, where is everybody? What did they do to you? And then he tells him about Reiner and Gabby, when she arrives at the very end, she looks like she is angry and ready to put up a fight. But without a doubt, probably one of the coolest scenes in this episode is the Colossal Titan destroying the Navy. Armin, now the Colossal Titan, transforms into his titan form and completely obliterates everything. After this scene, you can see things like charred remains of people and buildings and people are dead, kids are being crushed by rubble, innocents are dying, and Armin, all he can do is look on and say, is this the same thing that they saw? It's just really 
really kind of sad to be honest. Then we see the Beast Titan once again, but this time <laughs> it seems the Beast Titan is taken out by Levi. And all I can just think at this point is, man, Levi is just so cool. God, I love him so much. Anytime he is on screen, I just want him to cut Titans up and just kill people. And just like, I would love an Attack on Titan game where you're just playing as Levi and it's this super brutal, like, blade murder simulator or something. That would be really awesome. Put a good story behind it too? Yeah, that's definitely a day one pickup for me. Not really interested in those Attack on Titan games though. Which by the way, as Levi is going to take out the Beast Titan, he has this look on his face when he is slicing up Zeke and you can tell he does not like Zeke whatsoever. Levi's face is so determined to murder and kill this guy. It's kind of disturbing. It's not even really funny. It, it's just really, just really disturbing. <laughs> Honestly, a nice little hidden little tidbit that you guys probably didn't see. Carlo has pictures of a cute girl and one is naked. Too bad though, uh, I don't think he'll be seeing her again after what Sasha did to him, which is really sad. But speaking of Sasha, she takes out the gunners and saucers, there's a lot of really facial dynamics with these characters, with our classic characters showing up. They don't seem like Armin in this episode. He didn't really seem happy. Sasha in this episode, she didn't have her potato girl self, right? It seems like a lot of the personality for Sasha has been sort of stripped away. As well, we have Eren. I mean, we saw at the end of season three, Eren's facial expressions really shift and start to morph and change. But we, now we see it with Sasha. Sasha just has this really determined, almost expressionless kind of look on her face. And it's really sad to see because obviously Sasha is Sasha. She's one of the most beloved characters in all of AOT. So after they damn near take out Peak, Falco stands in front of Jean as he's going to make the final blows on Peak. And he's saying, you know, please don't shoot, don't hurt Peak, right? But Jean hesitates for a moment and he doesn't hold back. He goes ahead and he launches the Thunder Spear which is an interesting scene, and I'll explain why. If you remember in the last episode, he told Flock to make sure you don't kill any civilians or innocents. Of course, Falco isn't a civilian. He's a child soldier, but it, he doesn't know that. So it goes, it's kind of hypocritical. It goes against what John was saying to Flock in the last episode, and I just found that really interesting. But Peek saves him with some steam that she launches out as she's getting out of her tight form and they eventually get peak to safety. We see our first act in the battle between Aaron and Porco, which is actually kind of a unique matchup. You have a really fast striker in Porco, and then you have a really well-rounded fighter like Aaron, and you see them too. They fight. Porco cuts off one of Aaron's arms and is generally just very, very quick, though his attacks aren't as strong as say Aaron's is. But we see a gigantic Zeppelin come in. A really cool scene for the Zeppelin to come, just in terms of visuals that really showed kind of the awe of the Zeppelins, especially in real life. I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Zeppelins in real life, but they're, they're massive. They're massive things, and they look really cool, even in real life. So Armin is with Hanj. We see Hanj for the first time. It's always great to see Hanji-san, because she's uh, she's incredible. Who doesn't love Hanj? And they're there to essentially pick everyone up. And Hanj makes a comment about how Armin has a little bit of Erwin inside of him. And Armin says that this is their only hope. If they lose the founding Titan, if this mission isn't successful, then they're kind of screwed. But it really doesn't seem like they're screwed as Eren uses the Jaw Titan to essentially kill the Warhammer, swallow her fluids, and become more powerful? I'm not sure what happens when another Titan swallows a Titan. I don't remember like what happens. Somebody in the comments, please tell me. Unless it's a spoiler. Do not Comment spoilers, by the way, in my videos, please. And I really do mean that. I really do not want to know. So please do not tell me. Then we see the kids start to yell for Reiner because now after swallowing the Warhammer Titan, he's going to move on to swallowing Porco. And the kids keep yelling for him and Reiner hears them. Reiner wakes up and we see one of the coolest versions of Reiner without his faceplate. And I'm just like, oh my God, hell yeah, boys. We're doing it. We're getting it again. Ryder versus Aaron around two, baby. Oh, oh my God, guys. I cannot wait 
for the next episode. This episode was freaking awesome, by the way, but the next episode, oh hell yeah. Oh hell yeah. I am counting down the hours and the days until the next episode for this comes out. This was such a fantastic episode, but I want to hear what you guys think about this episode. Put down the comments below. Remember, later in the week on Wednesday, we'll be putting out a more in-depth analytical review theory-based video on this episode of AOT. So if you want to see something like that, then please make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. You know what you can do. Like this video, subscribe, ring the bell, comment down below your thoughts on the video, and the episode of Attack on Titan as well. I have Patreon, Teespring, you can buy merch and support me there, all that stuff. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching the video. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.